the you know it's like yes we have this huge problem with how regulated the grid is how slow moving the utilities are but we're going to have like almost a tale of two cities where there's all that stuff that's attached to the grid and then there's everything else like we're going to grow way faster than all of the expectations or all of the projections that are based on the expectations of how fast the utilities can grow because all that other stuff is just going to appear and it's just going to be located you know, behind the meter, off grid, um, and supply things directly. Yeah, I'm a big believer in that thesis. So, so what 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 gives you? So what what are the variables look you're looking at that makes you confident in that thesis? Um, well, I mean, it's it's stuff I've been talking about for years. Um, I mean, you got increasing the increasing pr proportion of your overall delivered cost of electricity that is transmission and distribution costs as opposed to the actual generation cost itself. So like that is continuing to tick up. Meanwhile, like a lot of uh, generation costs are, are coming down uh, or at least are staying flat. Um, so like the the cost itself is very significant. And as that continues to rise, that will just make behind the meter, you know, distributed generation look more attractive on a, on a relative basis. Then compounding sorry, that Matt. is... Sorry, j just to kind of for like, like my, my stupid brain. So the cost of moving the electricity is going up while generating the electricity is flat or going down. So if you can, where you are creating the energy and electricity, the costs are great. But when you're trying to get it to the end point, that has been the issue when it, and it's making it, making it difficult for companies or businesses or whatever, or the civilization to take advantage of lower energy costs. I just want to make sure I fully understand that point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And yeah. and that's basically because to get it from where it is to where it needs to go, you have to go through the grid and the grid A is old infrastructure and B it's heavily regulated. So like changing the system as it exists is difficult. Like and it yeah, it's basically you know, the amount of laws that stand in between you and getting what you want done in the time frame that you want it done. Yeah. State, like local, federal laws, uh, environmental laws, like they, these all get in the way. And then you've got the interconnect process and which is just dragging things out. And then you got like, you know, increasing lead times for critical equipment like transformers. So so basically connecting to the grid is which used to be like a two year process is now like a five to seven year process. And so so mm -hmm. I think we're just in this situation where you've got um the like economics of kind of doing on-site generation are you know probably as, as good as they've ever been and are like at least close to uh comparable to to grid supplied energy um and then on top of that you like are eliminating a huge amount of the timeline and regulatory hurdles if you can if you can do it on site yourself so i think those two things are um going to lead to the trends that hans was was talking about coming to fruition so how much like how much time does it save then if you build an off-grid system? Um, as quick as you can get it up. I mean, okay. like, you know, there, there are some where you can get it up in like, you know, six to nine months, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's aggressive, but I've, I've heard <laughs> rumors that that's at least possible. Uh, but I think in, even there you're running into issues like GE Vernova is, is basically sold out of gas turbines until 2028. Um, you really can't do behind the meter solar and wind because uh, that's not like base load power. I mean, part of the reason nobody wants to do this is because nobody wants to like be in charge of managing their own power supply. Like if you're just some steel company, you don't want to like, like manage a power plant on top of running a steel mill, right? Like you want to do the thing that you're really good at and like outsource the rest. But um, I, I think just how frustrating this interconnect process has become and the, the timelines uh, um, elongating for as long as they have it are, are just forcing the hands of some companies. So as long as, so, as as long as you own the land and you have your building permits, you're good to go. And it, it saves like two to five years of hassle. Yeah, like okay. depending on what you're doing, like you might still need an air permit. You know, there could be some other regulations. Um, it, but if you're if you're going to island yourself from the grid, then yeah, you can you can completely eliminate you know all the all these headaches. Okay. And so, and so this is, is this the literal process that Elon with XAI, is that the literal process they're doing where they are, they have the land, they're bringing in generators and they're just limited by how quickly they can get everything hooked up 
and going and basically uh would, would they would they would they truck yeah. in the natural gas would they would that be through a pipe like how how would that work like logistically speaking yeah so like i i know in um xai's particular situation with with colossus like so they you know elon's mode is let's go fast right so so they brought in some temporary generators i believe they were natural gas so there must have been a, a gas supply hookup that was available at that site, which I think was part of the reason that they chose it. Uh, but there was some existing interconnect amount that they then went and actually increased uh, working with, what is it, Memphis, um, whatever the utility is there in, in, in Memphis. Um, so they were essentially running these generators for several months just to, to get the, the data center up and running and, and to get these, you know, grok essentially uh, improving as fast as possible. Uh, but then they were working, you know, with the, the local regulator uh, to to like speed run the interconnect process. And I honestly wish I, I knew more about how they did that, because from what I understand, they were able to to get their interconnect um, and, and their like connection to the grid worked out extremely quickly. Like, I don't know, maybe 12 months or something like that, which which is kind of unheard of. Yeah. Matt, is there a different process? Because they already, you know, they already had an interconnection between them and the grid, like you said. The that factory was there. It uh, had yeah. it already existed and had quite a bit of power infrastructure that supplied it. So they took that, then they supplemented that with their temporary generators um, to where they could run. And obviously, using mega packs as the, you know, you said people don't really want to manage their own power plant. Well, that gets a lot easier if you've got, you know, a giant installation of mega packs that manage your power plant for you but yeah so if they if they already had that existing interconnect is there a faster process to modify an existing connection than you know generating a new one like uh greenfield yeah so it it, it typically is going to be faster to increase um your interconnect so if you like i forget what that that site was but let's say it was 30 megawatts that was already permitted so they could they could draw that on day one but you know they needed i, I don't i wish I, I knew what the exact size was but let's say it was you know 100 megawatts total that they needed so maybe they had you know 70 megawatts of these generators that were you know you could do 30 based on your interconnect from the grid you're trying to increase that to 100 through the process but you you've got this kind of temporary uh solution with the on-site generators um my understanding is it's it's faster to to go to just increase your interconnect amount or uh, like your your um i forget what what it's called but like the the limit that that you're allowed to um import from the grid um you know it's it's faster to do that than to just start from nothing but it's still in, in my experience i actually went through this process with um one of our I, I, a plant that i was uh, my, the, my company was trying to go from 60 megawatts to 225 and so we went through the whole interconnect process there and it's still, this was like five years ago and it still took probably three years, I, I wanna say, and like millions of dollars to go through that interconnect process. So Elon has done something special here with the, the local um, you know, grid operator to, to make that process go as quickly as it, as it has. I, uh, so I, I prompted Grok on this, um, on this Memphis project. It was 122 days from, <laughs> from announcement to operation. 122 days and one of yeah, the but that reasons doesn't that's not going to be the same um timeline that was from when they yeah started the installation to when the data centers were or like the the gpus were up and running and training but that was on the temporary generators they the literally just ones. got the like the utility company just completed building the new substation got that it where they transferred over from using those gas turbine temporary generators to now drawing power directly from the grid at whatever that new rate is. And, and that the utility is also building the new substation that's going to supply Colossus too. Um, so yeah, like, and I don't know how long has Colossus been up now. It's been six or eight months. So like, I'm sure that they applied for all those permits to get that substation connected, you know, when they broke ground or even before that. And so it's been, yeah, I think to, to Matt's point, at least a year, maybe longer um, between when they planned the project and when they actually got the power from the utility company, instead of having to, you know, do this temporary in-between solution. 
So yeah. Matt, based on your understanding, like if when you went through that process, if you had had the ability to just have an unlimited you know, quasi unlimited amount of battery storage to where you could promise your power provider that, hey, we're only going to pull power from you off peak so that we're not having any sort of impact on your ability to meet peak power demands. Do you think that would have sped up the process? Well, I I don't think so in, in this this particular case. Um, I mean, so we were a generator. We were not like a, a, an electric load. So that's a, a slightly different situation. Um, but, my, you know, my experience going through this um, was that like they really only care about what your maximum is, not like what your average is. So I think one of the things that um, XAI has done, which which is really helpful and, and probably helped them speed this along is um, they did have all this like backup power on site and then they've got those mega packs. So, um, you know, they can uh, work at the interconnects, um, you know, kind of limit. And then, um, you know, for if they want to be kind of consistently operating over that, they can they can do that with a lot of in-house power so that they're always, you know, kind of at that limit. Now, what was certainly not my experience, but if you've got a more forward looking uh, regulator, what I think would would make some sense is okay. You're, you're like permitted to do you know this amount of, of electricity on your grid. Your load's normally going to be up here. Uh, based on our study of the local infrastructure, we think you're mostly going to be okay. But if there's some you know emergency or if we're seeing some issue on the grid, we're going to like dial you down, and you need to respond immediately. And because they've got the mega packs, and and it even more so if you have some flexibility on your workloads, meaning if you can dial down the, the electric demand from your GPUs, then you're, you're willing to work with the, the grid operator and that provides a huge amount of value to the, to the grid actually. And then you can go from you know this, this experience when I went through it, which was like, it was very rigid, like here's our number, you can operate to this number, you can operate you know, like you know, 100 kilowatts more than, than we say but you can also operate 24 seven at this level. Like that, that was kind of the mindset of all the parties involved when I went through it. I, I think where the industry has gone in the last five years is, you know, both the grid operators and the, you know, the, the electricity users basically saying, we can be flexible, you know, in, in, you know, maybe try to provide some value back to the grid. You know, the, the batteries themselves can provide a lot of ancillary services, which helps us to stabilize the grid even when we're not using those. So like there's some benefit to the grade of, of having that. So I think if you're working collaboratively with your regulators, um, you know, there's there's probably some better paths forward here than than the way that, you know, the system was originally designed to, to have these processes go. Well, and just for the audience, what the challenge that these regulators and these utilities were facing is that, you know, if you don't have the ability to store even one electron worth of electricity, you have to coordinate then this massive set of infrastructure that's across, you know, across the whole country, potentially, where you're getting power from, you know, this wind farm in, you know, California, and you're sending it over here to Utah or whatever, um, or the other way around. So that like, maybe that's supplying part of the power to all of these people that are using power, but no one is using power you know it's not like power just usage is flat throughout the day you know there are times of the day where it's higher times of the day where it's lower and so like their margin for error is really difficult and you can get into these really complicated dynamic situations where you know a a small power failure happens you know there's a storm somewhere and it knocks out power here and then that has a cascading ripple effect throughout the whole system that makes it really hard for you to do your job. And so they're having to plan anytime they bring in, you know, a massive new user of electricity or a massive new supplier of electricity into this extremely complicated system, they're having to be able to understand the full impact that that could have on the system in, you know, a bazillion different scenarios before they say yes. But now if you come into that situation and you have the ability to have those batteries, whether regardless of whether you're a supplier or a, a user of electricity, then that ability to have some buffering in the system means that your the job of the utility companies who are trying to coordinate moving all this electricity around to everywhere gets a lot, lot easier. And so, yeah, that's, that's where this, um, 
I think they have the ability, to, like the, the utilities have an ability to move faster than they used to because the batteries give them the dynamic ability to respond to changing complex situations a lot better, a lot faster, and a lot easier. 